All right, everyone, it's time for another occult literature video. Folk Magic, Superstition, and Charms is now available. Link in the description to the edition on Amazon. Uh, I'm not going to make a Kindle copy. Kindle has different requirements and fucks up the works usually. Second and third links are to my books, blogs, and, and all of the referenced works that I've actually included in here in quotes. Uh, in different sections are available as well on the books blogs. It also has a reading list at the end of works that aren't consulted directly, just for further reading. And while I was studying for that, I actually found three additional works to edit once these compilations are done, so great. 251 pages, so it's a full-length work, albeit a little bit shorter than the other compilations thus far. And this will probably be the last work of 2020. Possibly I'll have one on astrology. I have a feeling it won't be ready till the middle of January And then there's one more to go and then I go back to the standalone works for another hundred editions So it's gonna be an exciting time. This work is a bric-a-brac. It could also be I could have been titled it occult miscellany It's got white magic. It's got black magic. It's got prognostication fortune-telling divination basically it's got a bit of astrology It's got summoning of demons in the most literal sense taken from multiple grimoires it's got all sorts of, uh, of interesting folklore, especially related to animals, plants, and stones. I decided to throw that in uh, in multiple sections. I think the one that's really a lot of people like best, though, is the talisman section. Talismans are kind of a thing within the occult that are uh, always evolving. And I've talked about this, how if you look at works that, that require talismans from the last hundred years, it tends to be far more simplistic. Unless you get into the, into the post-internet era, in which case they become uh, more, more strange again, because you see authors are trying to market themselves, and so they sort of borrow the style, the archaicism, if you will, of the pre-1800s era, and you get transition works between. I decided to include the entire talismanic passage from the Black Pullet, which is the, which is the most important one and the longest, and that's an interesting work, very much worth reading on its own as well. It's part story, part talismanic magic. There is a section in the Petit Albert, uh, and then a section in the Book of Forbidden Knowledge as well, and then a short ditty about it from a more modern academic work on the subject of talismanic usage. Um, that, that section is considerable. The longest ones are on animal and plant folklore. Uh, and, and it's basically luck, fortune telling, you know, telling the weather by how birds fly. Um, if the crow flies high, there won't be any rain. If it flies low to the ground, it's going to pour and cows lay down, it'll rain, stuff like that. Uh, very interesting. Uh, the plant section, I'm more interested in myself because I'm more into the botanical as opposed to the animal side of, of magical lore. There's a whole section on good luck charms. Um, there's a whole section on hexes and simple charms that are relate to illusion. Like, for instance, there's, there's a really weird one in here where you dip the wick of a candle in iron oxide and vinegar and I think something else, and if you light it in a room, it'll make everyone in the room appear black and they'll start hallucinating and stuff. And it might, it might be a chemical reaction of some actual chemical note. It comes from the Petite Albert, so I'm not exactly sure. It may just be a joke. Maybe the idea is that it'll stink up the room and then, you know, you know who the family sorcerer is and you can all laugh at them or something. I have seen stuff like that. Like the practice of taking a dead man's head, planting beans in its eyes and mouth, burying it at a crossroads, and then summoning a demon that'll give you whiskey. Obviously that doesn't happen. I think the whole point is you convince someone else to do that and you're in the bushes sitting there literally shaking with laughter. <laughs> I think that's the whole point. You can find that in occultism. But this is one part academic, one part literal. Some of these passages, they contain legitimate, authentic summoning rituals, charms, talismanic workings, a huge amount of folklore. There's probably a hundred pages alone of just lore. Um, and I wanted to make it sort of a miscellany work because, I mean, I couldn't create a standalone compilation of talismanic works because there are only about four works to actually mention. I can't create a standalone work of folklore because the subject is so massively vast that unless you're clipping it out of other works, you might as well just buy them as individual volumes that have already released those volumes. So I wanted to, to boil it down to a few basic subgenres of occult miscellany and put them in together, forming a work that's, again, the superstition and charms and folk rites of that kind are a loose lexicon. They are different subgenres, you know, hexes versus white magic, but they're both charms. Um, folklore and folk rites, the, the rite is a practice, the lore maybe not, but they have the basic same sense. It's just that the rite is used to affect the, the same thing that the lore is describing in a more mere sense. Um, so this is definitely 
a highly recommended work. For those of you that enjoy the compilations, I, I lost count of how many uh, editions of the Folk Medicine compilation sold. It's, it's actually incredible. It's become one of the best sellers continuously since release. The Demonology compilation, too. Uh, not so much the one on alchemy, which is funny. When I uh, first did the poll to ask people which uh, work I should release first, and, and Demonology won, and I did. Now, uh, Alchemy was a very, very close second, and it was almost exactly tied. <laughs> Yet, uh, it's not nearly as, uh, as popular, it seems, as folk medicine. Could have something to do with the pandemic, I suppose. Uh, but I'm enjoying these compilations. And number one, I get to go back through and relearn some of the stuff that I might have forgotten from these works in the first edit. Number two, I get to sort of categorize it. And number three, the fact that it's more of my own manufacture as opposed to the only thing I'm adding being the preface makes it more me, if that makes sense. And spiritually speaking, that has something to do with my uh, particular occult practices. I added a suggested reading list at the end, two and a half pages of additional works um, that I've consulted, although I haven't edited them. And there are a couple, though, that I will be editing. I actually obtained three entirely new works that I didn't have before in my source files uh, while I was researching for the suggested reading list. I wanted to, uh, to cast the net fairly broadly. So some of the works are more astrological, some of them are folklore, some of them are charms, some of them are older, some newer, some are more academic, some are more literal. I wanted to have a general bric-a-brac style sort of thing. And this work uh, consults, if I remember correctly, I think there was a list of about 50 different volumes that I quote in, this, in the course of this work, sometimes multiple times uh, or for multiple sections. Uh, the Book of Forbidden Knowledge, I think I quote five or six times in this particular work because it, it was a bric-a-brac as well. So it has a talismanic section, but it also has luck charms and folklore. Uh, very, very interesting. I think that you'll like this compilation a lot. I've kept the price down as much as I could, but it's full length, so it's a little more expensive than the standalone volumes. Again, 251 pages, full length work, uh, same style generally as before, more or less. Uh, link in the description, you can purchase it on Amazon. Second and third links to my books, blogs, and happy reading. That's about all. Peace out.